Hi there everyone, my name is Tom Mills. I wanted to do a quick video on our family's uh, position on violence and, uh, and media and games and that sort of thing. That's what we're talking about. Um, we don't censor violence much with our kids um, as far as uh, movies and games and that sort of thing. There are some things we do censor and I'll kind of talk about that at the end. But I wanted to talk about some of our reasons behind where, how we got to this particular point. We're always told, uh, you know, as parents, we're supposed to watch out for, uh, you know, violent movies and video games, and uh, you know they're going to, uh, it's bad for them and it's going to hurt their development. Uh, but the question I want to ask is, where did we get that stuff from? What's it supposed to actually do? What happens if we raise our kids with tons of violence? Uh, the idea is, uh, there's a couple things people say. Uh, it's going to desensitize them. And what they mean by saying desensitize is that you're going to see so much violence that when you won't affect you when you see it. And I guess that's supposed to be bad. Um, I don't really know why it's bad, uh, but the carry-on in inclination is that if you are desensitized to violence, then you're going to commit some violent acts. You're going to uh, be a violent criminal or an evil person in some way, shape, or form or another. Uh, but I, I don't think that's going to be the case. Uh, and you know a little bit about what I what I mean uh, is desensitization bad or good? Again, it all depends on what's going on. Uh, if you're if you stumble across a car accident and there's a guy bleeding out and you need to put apply pressure to the wound, I mean that's violence, right? Uh, you blood all over the place, gory scene, um, and it's supposed to be you're supposed to just rush in there and do the right thing, put the pressure on the wound, but. Uh, if you're not desensitized, there's people that freak out at even the sight of blood, you know, and they're paralyzed and that sort of thing. So it all depends on what kind of violence we're talking about. If a guy pulls a trigger, uh, shoots a gun, shoots somebody and just kills him, it all depends on whether the guy he being killed is, uh, you know, a hero that you're killing him and that's a bad thing, or he was a, a guy who's been murdering people and is about to murder your family and that's a good thing, right? The, the violence is... is you know the fact that you know the bullet goes through him and blood flies all over or whatever and that's you know not neither here nor there that's not evil or good that's just what happens um, and what is a result of what what's happening I see in our society is it does a couple things uh, our kids especially our boys uh, we already are fighting so much with the feminization of boys uh, that you know the, the, the father figure in shows and TV shows and movies is often an idiot and uh, you know men are told they need to cry you know to be to get a girl they need to be real sensitive because girls like a sensitive guy you know they don't like a sensitive guy for the most part maybe you're different or whatever and I, I should give as a disclaimer I'm sure this video is gonna upset people and if you're a friend of ours I apologize uh, it's, it's nothing personal this is just our feelings on it and uh, you know if you, you're free to do things however you'd like in your family but um, but the boys, uh, especially, uh, are being feminized. And if if all of a sudden a guy cuts his finger and like, oh, you know that girls get grossed out of blood, right? Uh, boys are supposed to be like, oh, blood's cool, right? But if they never have an opportunity to be allowed to say blood is cool, uh, they're going to be just like the girls, and they're just going to wussify them even more. Uh, but ultimately, the reason why the society tells us we need to prevent, you know, keep our kids from seeing violence is if they see violent acts, it's going to make them freak out and you're going to kill a bunch of people. And they, they do all these supposed studies that the people from Columbine and all these other mass shootings, um, you know, played violent video games for hours. And see, that's what did it. They played violent video games and, and that's what made them want to kill all these people. But uh, th that's just silly. Uh, and, and to make my point, uh, life is full of violence you know the Bible which we teach our kids about all the time is probably more violent than any movie or video game your kids will ever play um, you know I'll give you a couple examples Ehud in, Ju in Judges 3 uh, was one of the judge was a judge he was a, a man that God called forward to uh, redeem Israel from uh, slavery of, of one one king or another and Ehud uh, cocks his scheme to kill the king and uh, he goes into the king, gets everybody out, and he says he reached with his left hand, drew the sword from his right thigh, and plunged into the king's belly. Even the handle sank in after the blade, and its bowels discharged. Ehud did not pull the sword out, and the fat closed in over it. And that, that's a pretty gory, violent scene. You know, we could make that into a movie, and uh, 
show it to our kids and we would all lots of people would object but if we said oh this is a bible story like oh okay well that's cool it's kind of like the passion of the christ right you can't watch that violent video game but you better watch passion of the christ i remember when i went to go see passion of the christ in the theaters i was dumbfounded at the level of violence and i grew up in mortal combat you know when i was from when i was young and uh the amount of violence in uh in passion of the christ i think i actually think is is over the top you know and it's 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 obviously it was a violent thing and it is a uh, uh, a, a true story and all that, but I, I think it was gone a little too far. But I don't think that it's you know the violence was bad. You know, Passion of the Christ is supposed to tell our kids this is good, this is what happened. But uh, you know, this other instance, no, that that's bad. Second uh, Samuel twenty ten, another example. Uh, Amasa was not on guard against the dagger in Joab's hand, and Joab plunged into his belly, and his intestines spilled out onto the ground. Again, very violent. Uh, we all know about Judas. After he betrayed Jesus, it says Judas bought, bought a field. There he fell headlong. His body burst open, and its intestines spilled out. And so, uh, the Bible's full of very, very gory, very descriptive things, and those aren't bad things. Your kids aren't going to become mass murderers because they read these Bible stories or watch a Bible movie uh, based on these stories. You know, if you were to really recreate the Bible in a movie and do it very accurately, you would put all these features in here. Imagine a movie of a guy, you know, a big fat guy getting stole, uh, getting stabbed and his bowels discharging all over and fat closing in over the sword. I mean, that'd be disgusting. Uh, but, but that's just how, how things happened. Oh, phone call there. Uh, and then there's the sacrificial system, right? In Exodus, you know, we're told how to, how to, how to kill the bull. You know, take the bull's blood, put on the horns of the altar, put out the rest along the base, take the fat off the internal organs, the lobe of the liver, both kidneys, with the fat on the kidneys, burn them on the altar, burns the flesh in a different place. And that was part of their sacrificial system. Imagine a, a priest who's going to do a sacrifice. He's like, <laughs> getting grossed out. And that was not at all what happened. That was part of everybody's life. And that, that brings the idea of how it used to be. You know, not that long ago, uh, we had to butcher our own animals. We had to hunt to do things, you know, to, to get food. And and those were, that's what you did. You cut the animal open. You, I, I guarantee you, you take any kid from any city who's played all kinds of violent video games and violent movies and get them out there and actually have them gut an animal for the first time and I, they're going to throw up all over the place. Because uh, fake violence is nothing compared to real violence anyways. And then would be that's nothing compared to uh, we have David and Goliath, uh, Samson. Uh, there's stonings all through the Bible, you know, where kids are present. Uh, Paul was just a young boy when you know they were you know they were stoning people. Imagine actually having a guy in front of you and having to get the gall enough to take up a heavy stone and just clobber him in the head until he doesn't get up again. I mean, if doing that isn't going to cause you to become a mass murderer, then uh, you know, watching somebody get shot on TV is not not exactly the same kind of a thing. The problem is the motivation. Again, David kills Goliath. That's a good thing. You know, if uh, Goliath killed David, that'd be a bad thing. But it has nothing to do with how he died or the violent way in which they died. It has to do with who's the good guy, who's the bad guy, what's the motive for what's going on here. Um, uh, I talked about the you know, life used to be really violent with hunting and, and, and uh, butchering animals for our food. Uh, and as a result, now death is so far removed that if uh, somebody, even an adult, you know, it's actually in, so you go to a party and some guy drops dead for whatever reason, has a heart attack or maybe he gets shot even or something. You need to, those people are recommended to go to counseling uh, to deal with this terrible problem. And I think that's silly. Death should be is part of our life. Every single human alive today is going to die, and we should be reminded of that all the time. Every time we go to a funeral, that's the pastor's job to just remind everybody that we're mortal. Uh, but apart from that, we don't really think about it that much. If someone were to die, you'd call 911, and guys in white coats would rush in and, and they'd throw a sheet over their head because you can't see a dead body. That'd be bad. You know, uh, they, they rush it away from us. Uh, our animals would get pre butchered at the store. You know, kids think. Uh, hamburger comes from styrofoam packing at Walmart. They don't even know what it is, you know, half the time. And, uh, you know, uh, in, in the Bible, it was the same sort of way. In the story of Acts 5 with Ananias and Sapphira, um, they were lying about the money they gave, and the guy dies. And, you know, in the story, it, 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 Peter confronts him about his lie, and it says, uh, you were lying, and, and then it says, when Ananias heard this, he fell down and died. 
and great fear seized all who had uh, heard what had happened. Then some young men came forward, wrapped up his body, and carried them out and buried him. Young men, those are those are the teenagers of the Bible times. That was their job, you know, young strapping boys. Uh, there they had to go carry the body out and dig the hole. Uh, and then right after the they, they're probably just getting done uh, burying him, and then the wife comes in. And then he, Peter confronts the wife, and she lies as well. And it says, Peter said to her, How could you conspire to test the spirit of the Lord? Listen, the feet of the men who buried your husband are at the door, and they will carry you out also. Uh, it's hard enough to get our teenagers to do any work. Imagine what this is like. Oh, man, another one dead? Oh, we got to go bury this one too. I'm sure they were all groaning about it even. Uh, because this is what, that was the job of the young men at the time. And they were accustomed to it. Death was part of their society. And, uh, you know, it even says right here, uh, great fear sees all who had hap heard what had happened. Uh, death is supposed to be there and remind us that that's our ultimate goal. And as a result of taking death so far out of our life, you don't kill your own animals for food. I don't. Uh, you, know, you buy them from the store. And when people die, you hear about people dying. You know, when was the last time you actually saw somebody die? Uh, you know, most of the time. And if you do, they rush in real fast. And then you need counseling. You know, because we've gotten so far removed from death that it almost, death isn't even real. You go through all these questions like, man, is this really happening? It doesn't seem, it seems surreal, like it's not, not, not real. And uh, that, that causes us to overvalue our life. It, 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 we start realizing we don't see death and it becomes so far removed from our mind that we forget that that's our destination. And as a result, that makes us scared in general. That makes us over paranoid about our health over paranoid about you know even what we eat or where we go looking both ways across the street wearing our seat belts and again i don't mean anything bad about all those things uh but we should all be knowing that we're going to be dead someday and we need to be prepared for that and the more death is around us the more we see it that's an everyday reminder that our body is fragile and uh it, it ultimately what it comes down to uh you know jesus said uh, greater love has no man than this that one laid down his life for his friends and it gets to the point now where death is so to be feared uh, that you know if, if tomorrow X food was said to add some small percentage of uh, killing you like if you eat uh, bologna and peanut butter I love bologna and peanut butter sandwiches by the way if you eat bologna and peanut butter uh, you're gonna be uh, five percent more likely to die for one I don't know how they get these statistics like that how could they possibly calculate that they, they probably can't uh, but we would immediately pass that around and be on social media no one eat peanut butter and bologna they probably are doing that already uh, no one eat this because it's gonna it could cause cancer or it could kill you and, and so we would all would do that because death is terrible right and we're supposed to stay away from death and, instead of embracing it you know, and realizing that if you if you know that you are going to really spend eternity in heaven, and that's what you really believe, then you shouldn't really be that afraid of death. We, you know, what does it say? I think it's in, in uh, uh, Paul said uh, some of one of his letters that we. I don't want you to be uh, ignorant about those that fall asleep and mourn like the rest of men who have no hope. You know, he doesn't want them to mourn because if, if you have hope that you're going to be in heaven and you're going to you're going to see. Uh, your loved ones again, then you, you shouldn't be afraid of dying now. And you certainly wouldn't be brave enough to lay down your life for a friend even, right? Not, this is beside a family member. Um, so anyways, what's the real problem? Uh, we, we do, uh, you know, filter things from our children, but it's, mostly it's in the neighborhood of sexual things, especially with boys. It's one of the worst things to get going. Uh, we're big fans of teaching our kids about things. So we watch movies with pause all the time, uh, not because we're afraid something bad is going to happen. We usually know beforehand, or we tell them not to look if it's going to, you know, be a sexual situation. Uh, but we want to talk about what's going on in the movie, um, and, and the, the type of movies and games we really stay away from is uh, like this glorification of crime. That's something that goes under the radar now. We hear all about violence all over the place. Uh, but we'll watch The Sopranos uh, as adults or whatever, you know, which is glorifying uh, crime. 
you know, and again, I don't think there's anything wrong necessarily with that, as long as you're open, ready to have a conversation with your family about these things. Grand Theft Auto is a very popular game, and it's got lots of violence in there and, and sex. It's actually a terrible game for adults and kids alike, in my opinion. Uh, but besides that, uh, it glorifies crime. And GTA is, you know, Grand Theft Auto. So you're stealing cars, you're carjacking people, trying to run from the cops, and the bad guys become the heroes. Those are the dangerous things because they cause us to. If you're not prepared for them, they cause us to blur the line between good and evil. Uh, and, the, uh, and the goal there, again, is to start glorifying crime. You think about Bonnie and Clyde. Everybody's heard of Bonnie and Clyde, but if you really get down to it, Bonnie and Clyde were murderers. They were terrible people who would rob and kill people. Uh, Clyde's ma uh, wife would be involved, too, which wasn't, wasn't uh, Bonnie, in case you're curious. Uh, but they would they would rob banks and they would steal. They'd murder people. They they plot these all these crimes out. I mean, go back and we can go visit the places where they are. And it's some sort of great place. You know, oh, I visited where Bonnie and Clyde was. It was great. And in, in reality, we put these guys to be heroes. You think about the Godfather movies. Uh, uh, there's tons of them uh, where we glorify the criminals and the cops become the bad guys. Good guy, good becomes bad. A bad becomes good. And those are very dangerous. But even and when that happens, uh, we don't necessarily even stay away from it. It's not say, oh, our kids can't watch that. But we have the pause button. We talk about these things because with every movie, I'll bet you nearly every movie is a liberal agenda uh, that's trying to get into your family and make certain things happen. And so, uh, you know, that's why there's a homosexual in every movie. And it's got to be diversified. It's got to be all, all these different things. And, and that's a result. That's, a, that's a, uh, an effort to try and uh, make it normal so that we were, were really to accept it in outside life. And that's, that's the goal of why they do that. And our kids know that. You know, we pause it and say, hey, why do you suppose they had to make that character gay? You know, what's the, what's the point of that? And, you know, right away, you'll say, oh, yeah, well, this is why they do it. My kids know those things. They know those traps. And so when, when the crime becomes a good thing, even if you're staying, you're not going out watching something totally based on that, it's going to happen eventually. And uh, we just talk about what's their purpose here and what, what's going on. Is, it, is crime good? Are the cops bad? And maybe they are sometimes. But um, ultimately, uh, it's important to have a conversation with your kids. If your kid sees some violent thing, obviously the people, the kids, the people in the Bible, the kids in the Bible would bury the dead bodies. You know, heroes in the Bible, young men uh, would concoct elaborate schemes, very violent. Uh, David was a young man when he, you know, cut the head off Goliath. And you know, uh, I don't care how many violent video games you play. You give a sword to a boy and say, "Go cut that dude's head off," even if he's already dead. And uh, one, he probably won't be able to do it. It's a lot harder than you might think, I, th I, I wager. And two, it, we would, it, it'd be so grossed out, they might not get through it uh, because we become, uh, we become wussies in America and probably everywhere. And so when we see a violent scene on TV, provided it's not you know, uh, senseless, senseless violence or uh, glorifying crime, if it's you know, the bad guy's getting his, uh, we make our kids watch just about, you know, if they close their eyes, you can rewind it, you know, and you know, not really, but they, they we, we don't tell them to hide their eyes. We want them to see that. We want them to be desensitized. We, that just means that uh, when they see something violent, they're not wrapped up in the blood and totally in a, in a panic. They're thinking about more what's actually happening. You know, that would be happen if it was an emergency. If all of a sudden you had to put your hands inside someone's guts and hold them in uh, until, you know, help came. Uh, I want my kids to be able to do that and not be so paralyzed by fear that they can't make good decisions. Uh, I'm in the computer industry and one of the big tricks when you, people with the viruses right now is they flash a bunch of warnings on your screen. Warning, warning, you're infected with a virus. Flashing noise, beeps and noises and call this phone number right now and people get so scared by that. They'll say, oh, your, your identity is being stolen right now that they'll actually call this number and give people their personal information and credit card numbers and get taken for a lot of money uh, because they're afraid. If you're not afraid, you can make a rational decision. Once you lose grip and you become afraid and fearful, you, uh, you make poor decisions. And so uh, violence is, is, not, is neither here nor there. That's just what happens. It's the motivation of what's going on. And that's what more we look at and talk about with our kids. Uh, how somebody dies isn't as important as why why they die. So, so that that pretty much sums it up. Uh, we want our kids to 
realize the world is an evil place and there are bad things and sin here and we don't want to hide that from them we want to teach them about that uh, because the only trap that you fall for is the one you don't see so we, we, we st stay more on the education side of things and if we're raising our children the correct way the way the Lord wants us to they're not going to become mass murderers and you know we all are learning to tame the sin that's inside all of us uh, whether it's uh, anger or uh, or whatever it may be uh, our goal is to master our bodies Paul says I beat my body and make it my slave so we make our bodies obey us and if, if we have urges to do anything bad our kids should be learning to fight that and it's not going to be you know because they you know because there is violence in the world and they happen to witness that violence that's going to make them that way I mean we see thieves and robbers and sin all over the place and that's what we have to deal with so uh, we need to learn how to battle those those things that are inside of us and I don't think that uh, taking them out of the world is is the right way you want to be in the world uh, but not of the world so thanks for listening anyways I appreciate it and uh, talk to you next time <laughs>